Alrighty boys and girls, new project today. I've been working on this for a while. What I'm doing here, this is, happens to be a Kubota front end loader with a forklift conversion unit on it. Um, with the forklift conversion unit, it requires all the functions that the, the Kubota forklift or loader had in there. So forward and back, and then this would be tilt tilt forward, tilt back, raise up, sorry, go down. Third function. This right now is plumbed up to be the side shift. So the side shift shifts the mast left and right and that's that cylinder right there. What we have to do, if I take you over to this forklift, this is an older girl, she's had a long life. She's uh, getting ready to retire. So we have to be able to pop this attachment, which is a squeeze clamp, onto the forklift here by removing the, the forks and putting that on there. Um, it's gonna have quick disconnects. You can see them down there. They're a little greasy. Things are a little bit leaking. I haven't uh, determined if I'm going over the top with the, uh, the hoses. I still have to figure that out it requires another part that I don't have this one the hoses were all ported through bulkhead fittings down here and I don't have this on the other one I don't have that luxury and again it's the same thing there's a diverter valve I'll take you over to the other side the diverter valve what it does is take the third function and it makes a fourth function so you take the, the third function stick, this is how this one was done, and you put electronic solenoid on it. And that allows you to switch over from what it's plumbed as to the new fourth function. So if you're doing a tractor and you want to put four functions on, and you only have three functions, that's how you do it with a diverter valve. The diverter valves are relatively inexpensive, you can get them at different places. This is, happened to be the one I purchased here as a Rexroth unit. It's 12 volts. Um, let me give you a little quick rundown on this, how this works. So in the normal position as if there was no 12 volts going to it, or no power, you have P1, or, sorry, P1 and P2 is the existing third function function. P1 and P2 comes out at C3 and C4. And all the ports are labeled, so I just did that. And that's uh, C1, C2. That's going to be the new function back here. Sorry. There's going to be C1, C2. So this was the original function, goes in. The original function comes out. You energize the solenoid. This, this, these two guys here take over. That's your new function. So if you have a tractor with three functions and you require a fourth function, that's how you do it. You need this electric valve called a diverter valve. Then you don't have to change your three bank control valve to a four bank, which is very expensive. And sometimes you can't do it. That's the control valve, valve down there. That's a three bank. So you got one, two, three, three sets of functions. Okay, so that's what you have. We're turning it into four by adding the solenoid valve gives you another function. Uh, 12 volt solenoid controlled valve. This is the stick that I bought. This is a sure grip. Um, I installed it here. It comes with a nice adapter to fit the Kubota arm, the trigger switch. Now these come with buttons. Uh, I'll give you the part number. Just a second here, I'm gonna pull out the part number for you. This is only a single function, but you can get more functions. So that's, it's a Scorpion Technologies Limited, that's the part number there. That's one MO10. That's the wiring diagram, pretty simple. Um, relative, really inexpensive. Really inexpensive. So, that's how they want it wired. I haven't got down underneath here, so I haven't got to that yet. 
that so you don't pull on the wiring. So that's that's what I got to do yet. You can see it's just hanging here. I haven't gotten that far yet. That'll be wired into 12 volts. I'll go fuse protect it. I'll do 12 volts on the red. It'll come out on the black. The black will go to the solenoid coil and it'll be ground from the solenoid, the other side of the solenoid coil. And that'll give you your 12 volts. So what we had to do here is I had to get fooling around with some fittings because if with this I did a number eight hose, which I should have done a number six, everything would have been much easier. But somebody said, let's do it in eight. So I said, all right, whatever. I'm not the boss. We'll do it in eight. So I had to buy a short fitting, long fitting. You can see that here. So they'll spin past each other when you screw them in. There's another one here, short fitting, a long 90. So they'll spin past each other when you screw them in. The easy part, obviously, is the, the pressure in. Uh, it's just straight on. So I haven't decided whether I'm going to make new hoses for this yet. i got to look underneath because these will be stupid long. These are the OEM hoses. Well, they're not even OEM because that was added onto there. i got to get the other end off to see what it looks like. I'm not sure what it is. And then there's the, the side shift cylinder. So these hoses again go into here. These two right here will go down to here to the side shift. That's your normal function the way it used to be. The add-on function is going to come out of the top. So it's just to reiterate what I already told you. And now we're going to have four functions on the machine. The fourth function being controlled by the same joystick, the same lever as the third function but now you have a button that switches from three to four. So I'll, I'll be able to do a, an add-on video to this once it's all done and I'll be able to show you guys how it functions. But I got hoses yet to make. I got wiring to do. I just wanted to show you on this tractor, um, the solenoid valve was able to hide right here. That's it right there, this is an old one. Um, Look at the size of the coil on it. Big monster coil. Antique stuff. I don't know where they got it. That's it here. Oh, look at that. It was all done in number six. Imagine that. So that was tucked under here. But on this newer one, because this is, this is an old 420 series loader. This old girl here. She's a 420S. This is a four, R430. And you can see they've been redesigned. A lot of stuff has changed on these with the R430. This is an older one, it's about three years old. And uh, this is the one that we're going to be converting. And as you can see, lo and behold, because of the air conditioning, that took up that spot. And that, uh, that accumulator took up that spot. So there's no room for anything. And down there, you can see the clip. Right down there, your grease gun's supposed to go there. Like how the heck are you gonna get a grease gun in and out of there? Thank you, Kubota. Um, so that's, and then you can see my new valve there. Um, the valves, I've seen them pretty cheap, like a hundred bucks. Um, so they, they're readily available, Harbor Freight probably, in the U.S., Princess Auto in Canada. I know Princess Auto sells them. I paid a little more than that because it's a Rexroth, but, you know, it is what it is. So that, that's the rundown on what I'm doing with this. Um, and then we're going to see once it's all finished just how nicely it works. So that's the heads up on it. The where to, what is, what out, what was, what is, what hell is, what shall be, blah, blah. Well, that's what will work. <laughs> Don't mind me, I'm, I'm rambling. So that's how to put a third or fourth function on a three function machine. Thanks, subscribe, ring the bell, check back often, and we'll see you soon with the completion video. Take care.